Hey everybody, this is Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. Today I'm going to take you on a walk through my garden and we're going to see how um, my plants and my seedlings that are in my winter sown jugs have survived the past week of the polar vortex weather. In my container beds, um, in my container garden area, I have uh, cool weather crops planted, but I covered them just in case because they were still quite small and the weather was supposed to get really, really cold. Um, also, I had some warm weather crops start germinating in my uh, winter sown containers, some tomatoes and things that would not have survived in the frigid temperatures, so I covered them as well. So I'm going to take you over to the garden and we're going to see how things are surviving. Today I'm hoping to uncover them for the last time this season, but we shall see what Mother Nature holds in the coming weeks. So come on along, let's go looking. All right, so this is my container garden area, and as you can see, all my containers are covered. The only thing that I did not cover, and I probably should have, was my potatoes. So um, I had some potatoes that were starting to pop through the soil, and all the foliage that had come through the soil had uh, died. But I'm not too worried because they were just starting to come through, so I'm pretty sure they will um, push through more foliage and they will be just fine. But let's go ahead and uncover my uh, container beds and see what they're looking like. Okay, so my container garden is looking great. My kale is looking wonderful. Got a couple different types of kale. And got a lettuce mix. Even my carrots did okay being covered. Yay. Look at this bed. It's beautiful. I've got a couple of varieties of lettuce mixes in here. A tatsoi mustard, some spinach. It's time for me to start harvesting for some nice delicious salad greens. Um, some more lettuces. And I also have safflowers planted in here. Um, safflowers are jokingly known as the poor man's saffron. They're really pretty, really prickly but definitely worth having in your garden um, for pollinators and things like that. So yeah, so they're doing pretty good. All right, the other containers that I just showed you were seedlings that were transplanted from winter sown milk jugs. And you saw how big they were. These um, beds that I'm gonna show you here, these um, were direct sown. And you can see the difference. Um, my radishes are just starting to come up. I have some carrots that are just starting to come up and some spinach that is just starting to come up. Um, they all survived the polar vortex, but you can see the difference between direct seeding and um, growing them in milk jugs before planting them in the containers. This is a garlic bed that I had from extra uh, garlic that started to go to, uh, not go to seed, um, but started to sprout in my pantry. So I went ahead and planted that this spring. Uh, you generally plant garlic in the fall, but because I had some sprouting in the pantry, I just threw them in here and figured, you know, if, if I get some garlic, I get some garlic. If not, no big deal. And then this is the other direct sown bed. Uh, you can see I have very little plants in here right now as far as germination. Uh, I've got some collards uh, that are the tallest right now. I have some Swiss chard that's just starting to come up and a couple beets that are just starting to come up. But yeah, um, direct sown takes a lot longer to germinate um, when there's nothing covering them because the soil stays really cold um, and things. Where in the winter sown milk jugs, the soil is a little bit warmer and the air is a little bit warmer because it's contained inside a uh, little mini greenhouse environment. So there's a plug for winter sowing versus direct sowing. I also have some miniature plants that um, I'm starting to grow. And with the polar vertex, I had to cover them. My husband thought that I planted a milk jug, <laughs> but no, uh, this is actually, a, um, I think it's called a cloche. It's a top of a milk jug and then it's buried uh, with the mulch. It's surrounding my goji berry. And I'll show you how that survived. So you see my goji berry survived, it's still nice and green. All right, so here's the main garden. A lot of work's been done in here. We got some mulch, a lot of mulch, and a lot of it got put in the container bed area. And then we started doing this bed, and we've got the rest of the garden to do. But it's getting there, um, and we got a path put in because overhead, I don't want to 
shine you up into the sun. But overhead there is a wire that goes from the garage over to the fence. It um, is what electrifies the uh, fence. And uh, so we have to have a way to walk through the bed to check on the wire. And so we put a path in that way you kind of know where to walk and you're not stepping on plants. But uh, these jugs did pretty well. I did not have to cover them because they were all cold, cold hardy and some still haven't germinated so they're fine. The cold did damage some of my perennials. Um, this is lemon balm right here and you can see the darker areas where the freeze actually did some damage. But lemon balm is kind of like a mint. It's going to just bounce back just fine. It'll be okay. My valerian doesn't look too good either, um, but this is the very beginning of the season and it'll bounce back. Um, it might lose some of the uh, foliage that's still wimpy, but it'll be okay. But yeah, you can definitely see that things were really lush and starting to come along because we've had some nice warm spells and then the polar vortex um, did some damage. Alright, so this is my main jug section where most of my warm weather crops were put when they started to germinate. I did lose some because I didn't have them covered with a thick enough cloth, um, but we're going to uncover these and see how they did. And this area here, the jugs under here are more of the cold hardy crops um, that had sprouted but had not planted them or anything yet and we just wanted to make sure that they were protected just in case, um, you know, sometimes even cold weather crops don't fare so well when it gets really, really, really cold. <clears throat> and then I also just covered last night um, my peppers. I, I thought I saw maybe a sprout or two, so I didn't want to chance it, so I went ahead and covered my peppers as well. So now I'm going to uncover them and see how we did. Okay, these crops look pretty good. Um, there seems to be no damage on the ones that were open. They're nice and vibrant and lush, so they look pretty good. Let's take a look at some of the other ones here real quick. How much petunias are doing all right. Carrots are doing fine. My lettuce. Yeah, we're looking like we're pretty good there, awesome. All right, so let's check some of these. Um, I just want to check a few of them. Checking all of them would take forever, and I don't think you want to take forever. So I'm just going to check a few of them and see how we're done, how we've done with um, keeping them protected. I have one lone black crumb seedling that made it through the night. That's pretty exciting on that one. I've got another one there, so that's really exciting. So those ones have survived. I have a lot more that's going to uh, germinate, so um, I'm pretty okay with that. You can see my uh, sunflowers. This, they're almost time to plant. This is the mammoth sunflower, then my velvet, uh, and some more flax. My bronze fennel, looking pretty good. This is Mongolian giant sunflower white sunflowers. My buckwheat's doing okay. I had lost a couple in the beginning, but once I covered with the uh, thicker cloth, they seem to do all right. My watermelon survived. My hollyhocks survived. And I have some nasturtiums that survived. Nasturtiums hate the cold, almost like tomatoes and things. But I have one that survived, and I see another one starting to germinate. So all in all, my jugs did very well, um, getting them covered with a thicker blanket uh, as soon as possible overnights. Um, so I'm very excited about that. I lost some of my warm weather crops, but I planted a lot of seeds in each of those jugs. So I'm pretty sure that um, all in all, I'll still get a nice uh, selection of seedlings. These are my peas that I had planted quite a few weeks ago. and. Uh, they're all looking tall and vibrant and bright. I did not cover these at all. I just made sure that I watered them about twice uh, during the week just to make sure they wouldn't go into shock too much. Um, and they're looking great. Now these were the last items that um, I took precautions with. Uh, these are all my lettuce starts and things like that that I have planted for um, uh, customers. These were all started in milk jugs, and then when they got um, too 
two sets of true leaves on them. I transplanted them to flats so that they can grow bigger and I could uh, sell them um, to individuals. So I brought them all in here. Um, you can see a uh, pretty stacked here. Um, it was a squeeze, <laughs> but I got them all in here and um, they did okay. My Nankin cherry um, is looking a little rough, um, but it's looked a little rough ever since I bought them actually. But I'm starting to see some new growth on them, so I think they'll be okay. And even my beans, which I planted in here um, to kind of get some beans going for some customers, um, they were starting to sprout uh, yesterday and the day before, um, but they were still kind of buried in the soil. So I wasn't too worried yet, um, even though it was going to get really, really, really cold um, because they hadn't popped through. Well, you can tell it's warmer now um, because they're actually starting to pop through and I'm sure by the end of the day, uh, the taller ones will probably open up their first uh, set of leaves today. So yeah, very, very exciting. My hanging plants I can finally put back outside. So there's the update on whether my garden survived the polar vortex. Now again, I'm in central Michigan, zone 5B. And the Farmer's Almanac this year said we could plant um, May 9th, the day before Mother's Day, I think. And I didn't follow that advice because in Michigan, and I've lived here almost all my life, you don't plant any warm weather crops until Memorial Day weekend or after. Um, that's the general rule here. So when the Farmer's Almanac said, oh, go ahead, your last frost date's May 9th, nah. <laughs> so anyways, so I only had planted my cold tolerant crops. But anyways, I'm just so thankful that everything, I had pretty much survived the polar vortex. I did lose some, as you saw, some were damaged, but overall it was a success. So I'm so thankful. So I hope that this uh, video kind of gave you some inspiration, gave you some hope, and gave you some encouragement that even when things go south, they can still go north in a good way. So thank you so much for watching everybody. This is Jen from Garden Jen's Journey, wishing that wherever you are, you are wonderfully blessed. Bye.